Hello and welcome to the second video of the Edinburgh Guide to the PSA. This video will focus on section 2, Prescription Review. As a brief overview, this section assesses your ability to review a patient's current prescriptions and decide which components are inappropriate, ineffective or unsafe in a specific clinical context. Information regarding the clinical situation will be detailed in the patient history, examination and investigations. Following this clinical information, you will be presented with the patient's prescription chart. For each scenario, you will be expected to recognize medications or fluids that may be contraindicated, unnecessary, or contain an error, including the drug, dose, frequency, and or route. You will also be expected to notice any medications that interact with each other, require an amendment, or which are contributing to the patient's clinical condition. The list of medications may be from an inpatient prescription chart, general practice prescription, or a list provided at a clinical handover. This section is made up of eight questions worth four marks each and comprises 16% of the total marks. For each scenario, there will be two questions, marked A and B. Besides each medication on the prescription chart, there will be two columns, also labelled A and B, tick boxes which you can use to indicate your chosen answers. Questions A and B may not be worth the same number of marks. For example, Question A may instruct you to tick two boxes, each of which worth one mark. Or, on the other hand, question B may only require one answer, worth two marks. For this section, some relevant knowledge regarding common adverse effects, interactions and clinical effects of medications is assumed. Consulting the BNF may be appropriate, especially for information that would not be considered core knowledge of a minimally competent foundation year doctor. However, having the core knowledge of these topics would put you at an advantage as you would not have to spend time looking it up. Medications typically assessed in this section include antihypertensives, statins, anticoagulants, diuretics and antibiotics. Other topics that may be assessed include interactions of the oral contraceptive pill, medications that are contraindicated in pregnancy and cases of polypharmacy in elderly patients. Let's put this into context and move on to some example questions. Here's our first scenario. Here we have a 75 year old woman who presents to her GP complaining of ankle edema. Examination of her cardiovascular system is normal apart from non-pitting bilateral ankle edema. Her urinalysis is negative for proteinuria, hematuria, leukocytes and nitrites. Her current prescriptions are listed in the table. The doses, frequencies and routes of administration are detailed in the table for each medication. Question A of this scenario asks you to identify the medication that is most likely to blame for the patient's ankle edema. Question B of this scenario asks you to identify the three prescriptions which should be stopped or used with caution if the patient's kidney function deteriorates. Time to pause here and consider your answer. Now that you have considered your answer, let's go through the question. So, as we previously mentioned, question A is dealing with an elderly patient who presents with ankle edema. The question tests your ability to recognize a very common side effect of amlodipine, namely ankle swelling. Therefore, the correct answer is amlodipine. Considering the increasing prevalence of hypertension in elderly populations, Antihypertensives are a key group of medications that foundation doctors are expected to have knowledge on. These medications include calcium channel blockers, thiazide diuretics, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. Let's look through the other options and explain why they were not the correct answer. Sertraline, simvastatin, and metformin all have a long list of common side effects. However, edema is not one, thus they are incorrect. Important common side effects of omeprazole to remember include nausea, abdominal pain, diarrhea and GI disorders. Peripheral edema is listed as an uncommon side effect. However, amlodipine is more likely to have caused this symptom, 
Hence, it is incorrect. Question B is assessing knowledge regarding medications that are contraindicated or used with caution in patients with poor kidney function. The question indicates that there are three answers that should be selected. Metformin is contraindicated if the patient's estimated glomerular filtration rate is less than 30. This is due to the risk of metformin inducing lactic acidosis. Furthermore, simvastatin doses over 10 mg per day should be used with caution in those with an estimated glomerular filtration rate under 30. Moreover, the BNF indicates that sertraline should be used in caution in patients with renal impairment. Omeprazole should be stopped in the event of it causing interstitial nephritis. This is a rare side effect of proton pump inhibitors. However, the negative urinalysis results indicate that the patient does not have an interstitial nephritis. Nephritis is a very rare side effect of the anti-TNF therapy and not of primary concern in this case. Therefore, the correct answers to the question are metformin, simvastatin, and sertraline. I hope this makes sense and shows that the PSA focuses on commonly prescribed drugs by FY doctors. Let's move on to the second scenario. This is an 87-year-old man with chronic congestive heart failure who has developed increased muscle fatigue and his recent ECG shows tall T waves. His urea and electrolyte levels are all within the respective normal ranges, except from one, the potassium, which is slightly high. His current prescriptions are listed in the table. Question A of this clinical scenario asks you to identify two medications which are most likely contributing to the patient's hyperkalemia, and question B asks you to select one medication which is most likely exacerbating the patient's heart failure. Now would be a good time to pause the video to come up with your own answer. Hopefully you now have an answer, so let's see how you got on. Question A assesses knowledge of potential iatrogenic causes of hyperkalemia. Derangements in potassium levels are some of the most dangerous electrolyte abnormalities due to their potential to cause severe cardiac arrhythmias. Spironolactone and lisinopril are the correct answers. Spironolactone is classed as a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist and a potassium-sparing diuretic. Therefore, you can see how one of the most common side effects of spironolactone is hyperkalemia. Lisinopril is an angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor. Suppression of angiotensin leads to a decrease in aldosterone levels. The reduction in aldosterone function leads to retention of potassium, which contributes to hyperkalemia. Now, let's look at the other answers and why they are incorrect. Although NSAIDs can interact with ACE inhibitors to cause hyperkalemia, and he is on both of them, it is the interaction between the two that causes this. However, hyperkalemia is a side effect of the other two correct answers, so they are more likely to cause it, and thus the correct answers. The other medications could be ruled out, as the BNF does not list hyperkalemia as a side effect for any of them. Question B asks you to select the medications which may be worsening the patient's cardiac status. Diclofenac is the correct answer. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as diclofenac increase the risk of adverse cardiovascular events, including myocardial infarction, stroke, and exacerbation of heart failure. They are some of the most commonly prescribed medications, and their prostaglandin-mediated side effects are important to know. The other medications are not known to exacerbate congestive heart failure and are thus incorrect. Hopefully this explanation has clarified any uncertainties you may have had. It highlights the need for candidates to have basic knowledge regarding causative medications in drug-induced electrolyte abnormalities. Now let's move on to our third and final scenario. Here we have a 50-year-old asthmatic man who attends his GP for an annual review. He has had a two-week history of odonophagia and a loss of taste. His past medical history includes asthma and hypertension. During this appointment, his blood pressure was measured to be 138 over 92. His current prescriptions are listed in the table. Question A asks you to identify one medication that is most likely to be a cause of this patient's odonophagia and loss of taste. Question B asks which one medication is most likely to be contraindicated in this patient. Once again, pause to think of your answer. 
Now let's walk through the question and compare your answers to ours. Question A first requires you to recognise the possible cause of odonophagia and altered taste, both of which may be caused by oral candidiasis. You must then identify that oral candidiasis may be caused by the inhaled steroid, beclometasone dipropionate, which he is on for his asthma. The other medications would not cause these symptoms. Question B assesses your knowledge of contraindicated medications in asthma. You must realise that bisoprolol fumarate is contraindicated here due to the bronchoconstrictive nature of the blocking of the beta-2 adrenal receptors that usually promote bronchodilation. Non-selected beta blockers are significantly higher risk than more cardioselective counterparts. Fingers crossed that you don't have any unanswered questions about this scenario and that it highlighted that the common contraindications of commonly prescribed medications are assumed knowledge. However, remember that the BNF is always there to help you if you have a mind blank or if you just want some reassurance. I hope you have enjoyed this video as part of the Edinburgh Guide to PSA series. For further study resources, please visit our website. If you have any queries about anything covered in this video, please contact our team via email or Facebook. If you have a minute to spare, we would love it if you could complete the feedback form linked below in the description. We look forward to seeing you in our next video, Section 3, Planning Management. <laughs>